Hello and welcome to another Van Hack podcast. Uh, today we have Drew, uh, whose last name I'm not going to try and pronounce. Uh, oh, Grizzik. Oh, Grizzik. <laughs> Drew Grizzik. Uh, and he is one of the, le- or he is the uh, co leader uh, of the Vancouver Tech Podcast, as well as the Vancouver Hacker Nest uh, Meetup, and extremely involved in the Vancouver startup community. Um, I don't know what exactly you're working on right now, but I think you can explain a little bit maybe, uh, as well as uh, he's going to share some information about how you can get an amazing job uh, in, in the Canadian tech space. So welcome, welcome, Drew. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on, Ilya. Seems uh, pretty awesome. Excited to be here. Cool, cool. So maybe we can start off a little bit about, about your background. Uh, you know, where are you from? Uh, how did you get into tech? And uh, maybe a little bit of highlights of, of your career in the last couple of years. Yeah, sure. Um, so actually, I grew up in, uh, in North Vancouver, so Vancouver area. Um, and uh, when I was pretty young, I got the itch to travel. So I went away for a number of years. I went to um, uh, Asia mostly. So I was in Korea, Japan, uh, a little bit of time in Taiwan. And uh, uh, while I was over there, I uh, actually I did a um, I did a diploma in computing science, and it was kind of uh, I'd always been well I was kind of interested in games actually, <laughs> interested in computer games and in computers and kind of tinkering with them. Uh, and so I did my diploma in computer science, and I thought that was pretty interesting, but I still wasn't really I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. Um, and uh, I had a pretty good I think pretty good career over there. I was working. Um, I was working with Samsung for a number of years in human resources, and uh, I decided to to quit that that career path and kind of go back to school to to study language. Um, and I was working uh, in the evenings and weekends, so I was I was teaching. And we we started. Uh, I think this was back almost uh, wow, almost ten years ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. about ten years ago. Um, there was a, a TOEFL, which is a, a test uh, of English. And uh, they changed the way that they were doing the TOEFL, the, doing the actual testing, as so they introduced an online component. Um, and we were the first company, uh, I believe, in Korea to have uh, a mock simulation. So we had uh, an online component as well as an in-class component. Um, and that was, a, that was pretty interesting. I spent about four years working with a company that was developing um, online simulated uh, TOEFL testing and teaching materials. So that was that was fun, um, and I came back to Vancouver, and uh, and I actually found it really interesting because I was you know I'm I'm from Canada, mm-hmm. um, and I didn't really I I spent so much time away that I felt like an immigrant coming to a new country, mm-hmm. but I didn't qualify for any of the things that uh, any of the helping things or any of the the things that the government has in place for you know, newly arrived immigrants. Yeah. Um, of course, I didn't need the, the language skills. My, my English was still okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I found it really difficult, actually, at first to, to start to get into, um, into the community. I didn't even know what communities existed. Uh, and so the, I applied, I think, for, to about, uh, about 300 different places, actually. Wow. About 300 different places. And I had two interviews. Wow, um, yeah. And I ended up doing car sales for about a year, actually. And it was, uh, it was pretty rough for me. Um, not that the people were bad or anything like that. I just, uh, it was quite a change. I had some suits, and so it kind of seemed like the right place to be. <laughs> um, but I'd also been, I was really interested in actually putting my, uh, putting my diploma to use. And I been kind of studying on, my, on the side. Um, and uh, around the same time, my mom had a, had an accident and kind of broke her hand and she was living a little out of the way of Vancouver. So she was living over on uh, Vancouver Island. Mm-hmm. So I went to, to stay with her for a while. And um, when I did, it was really interesting. There was a, a company over on Vancouver Island in Nanaimo called Real Estate Webmasters. And they were looking for a technical support person. So I went in and did that. And that was my first, uh, my first job in computing. Nice. I did that for about a year. Um, my mom healed up pretty well. It was time to come back to Vancouver. And I thought, okay, so I've got a year of technical support. Now, every day after work, I would go to, um, to Starbucks for about four hours or five hours and kind of read through some PHP books and, um, and study. 
And nice. I kind of felt like, all right, yeah, I can get a job uh, as a developer. Um, and so I applied to a couple of places and I wasn't getting anything. You know, it was it actually seemed pretty hard. Um, so I came back over to, to Vancouver and I started teaching actually, because that was uh, something I could find. Hmm. But I was still, you know, I was still quite interested in, in development. So I was, as I was teaching, I was developing a lot of, uh, kind of online resources for language learning using mm -hmm. Google and, and related tools so like Google Drive, um, doing a lot of shared docs and uh, uh, using forms, for example, for quizzes. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I thought that was pretty interesting. But uh, so I kept studying, kept studying. And now keep in mind, so in my case, this was, you know, I'd never worked as a software developer. Right. I, um, so I, I did have a, a diploma and I had uh, some experience in tech support, mm -hmm. but not, not particularly um, a lot of development. Um, and so this was uh, November 2013. Mm -hmm. um, I'd been back in Vancouver about five months, I think, at the time I was teaching. And uh, I heard about these software development boot camps. Right. Um, and now I'd heard of them before, actually, about the one in, uh, in San Francisco. Yeah. I think it was like, like devbootcamp.com or something. Yeah. And, um, and I was actually seriously considering going down to San Francisco. So I felt like I just needed a little bit more to get over the edge um, to get into, to actually be able to, to do development. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, I ended up uh, taking one of the boot camps, and it was uh, the first one that was Code Core. Awesome. Uh, and that really, I think that, that took a lot of like the theoretical knowledge I'd had or the, you know, I'd read a lot of books, I'd done some database uh, courses and um, it took a lot of that and really solidified it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was able to go and uh, work in uh, a company, a local company called Active State where I think I, I just learned a ton. But um, going back to the, you know, how to get into the community and things like that. So I think I, I actually went about it kind of a difficult way, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, because I didn't really use the community that, that's there. I didn't uh, use the tools or the resources that we have available. Right. Um, but if I had, maybe I would have uh, learned some things. Well, actually, I guess that's not entirely true. So I, when I did come back to Vancouver, um, mm -hmm. you know meetup.com? Of course, of course. So I signed up to all of the different meetups that I, I thought I'd want to go to. Um, but I didn't feel confident enough at the time in my ability uh, as a developer to go out to any of these meetups, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I was really, I guess, uh, lacking that self-confidence at the time. Uh, and I kind of, looking back, I wish I would have just gone out because people are really friendly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a lot of free pizza, too. <laughs> <laughs> and beer. <laughs> and beer. Um, so, yeah, so I... I um, I did find actually the, uh, in no I said November 2013, there was um, uh, Tam from CodeCore and a couple of other people in the Ruby community. They did, um, uh, they called it Rails Day, and it was a free one day course uh, for learning Ruby on Rails. And it was really accelerated. It was, um, it pretty much covered, you know, the first, uh, the first week and a half of the boot camp material wow. in a day, you know. Uh, so it was obviously very, very, fast paced and uh and i went out to that and and i felt like this this was really like a day just for me it felt mm -hmm. like there, there were i don't know maybe 100 people there though but um but i won i won the book and i oh wow that was just a chance like a random draw from whoever's email okay um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was really uh yeah it was cool and so i ended up signing up and that made a big difference i think for for my confidence a lot as well but also i, I think it was a great experience um and, and I was really impressed, like, I don't know if you've ever had that feeling, uh, like you're, you're, you're waiting almost for like an alien spaceship to come down and, and be like, finally, we found you. We've been looking <laughs> all over the universe. You're one of us. And, and <laughs> kind of like you didn't really belong with, uh, with wherever you're at or some of the people around you. Yeah, um, yeah. Find your tribe. Yeah, and I think that was why I was always interested in traveling and learning other languages as well, was to kind of go out there and see, you know, where are the like-minded people or what, what is going on? And I really felt like, like stepping into the, the tech scene, mm -hmm. that was it. Suddenly there's all these people that are, they're really excited about what they're doing and they're not trying to, um, 
they're not trying to defend their jobs and, and keep you out of it. They're actually mm-hmm. trying to pull people in. And yeah. so that's really amazing. And, you know, people are so nice and so, so friendly because I think they're doing well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they can. It feels like it's a community that actually gets better with more people. Yeah. Yeah, and that's true. Yeah. And so uh, definitely Hacker Nest, that was, uh, you mentioned that. Um, that's one of the ones I'm a lead organizer for Vancouver. Um, but it's, uh, that was one of the first meetups that I actually did go out to Mm. and it was unbelievable. It was just like a bunch of people in tech enjoying some drinks in interesting, in cool office locations around Vancouver. What, what, what is Hacker's Nest though? Like maybe someone hasn't heard of it before. Yeah. So Hacker Nest is a, it's an international organization. It's in, I think 23 or 24 cities now uh, worldwide across four continents. And it started in Toronto um, and it was kind of a, you know, I, as far as I know, anyway, it was just as simple as, hey, let's, let's, it's beer o'clock Friday or Monday or whatever. Let's invite uh, other people over and let's just have, let's have an open house for the community kind mm. of thing. Um, and, it, and it just went from there. Mm. So there's different takes, I think, than different people. Hackerness is different things to different people. I think right. for me, Hackerness is that, um, you know, when you're, when you're in high school, Um, and I say high school more than university because when you're in high school, it feels like everybody's kind of studying the same types of things and, Mm -hmm. um, you're all still so connected, even though you might not know, uh, everybody in your, in all of your classes, right. um, Well, you might not know their phone numbers, but you know who they are. You recognize their face and, you know, a lot of people you, you might see at school or you see at a party or you, uh, and you talk to, um, but you might not hang out on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of like that. It's like the it's like that um, that once a month gathering for like minded people in the same community to right. just get together and catch up. And so you might not know everybody's names, but you've kind of seen their faces before, and you, can, and you do know some people. And you might not have seen someone for six months, and they were working on that really cool editor project or or something, and you just get a chance to to be connected as a community. Mm-hmm. Um, it's that for me. Anyway. Very cool.